Hey guys, welcome to the Garage. Today we're talking about Tesla chargers and I want to talk about why the Tesla wall connector is going to be the best choice for your charging needs. Now I touched on this subject a little bit in a previous video a few weeks ago, but I want to go a little more in depth. And in a lot of my videos, I get people commenting like, oh, hey, I only have a hundred amp service at my house. And so the electrician wasn't able to install the wall connector or even a plug to even charge my car. They're saying I have to upgrade to a bigger panel. 150 or 200 amp service at my house and it's you know seven eight ten thousand dollars to do that well i want to talk about in this video why the wall connector is a very versatile product because it can take all types of power now i installed all four of my wall connectors i'm not an electrician and so i was able to just do some research i was able to do it i had an electrician come out and like check my work and it, everything was perfect he said and so uh, i want to just pass some information along because maybe maybe an electrician they may not know this. They may try to upsell you just to give you some information that you're armed with when an electrician comes to your house and tells you about your power situation at your panel. Okay, these wall connectors are really versatile. They're very easy to install as well. They have this nice like glass cover here. You can get replacement ones to match the color of your car, which is really cool. And it comes with a 24 foot length of cable or of cord to be able to plug in your car. So it's very versatile on like where you can put this and then how it can reach to the back of your car to plug it in. Kind of the wiring, how it works here, it's pretty simple. So this mounts on your wall and then the power is gonna come in through, you can, it can come in through the top, it can come in through the bottom, uh, it can come in through these holes here on the, on the bottom as well. The nice thing with installing this is it doesn't require a neutral wire. So it just needs the ground and then two hot wires. And so you can use uh, cheaper wire than running like a 6-3, 8-3 wire, 10-3 wire. You can use a 6-2, a, a 8-2, 10-2, 12-2, 14-2 wire to run this. So it's going to be cheaper wire and the wire is very simple. So all you simply do is just mount this to the wall. You you bring your power wires, in, you know, one, one power wire here, one power wire here, and the ground into there and it's ready to go. Okay, so this chart I found on the Tesla website, this is under the Tesla wall connector uh, kind of support page and so if you can see here on this side here it shows the amperage of the breaker and this can be installed with as little as a 15 amp breaker but it's got to be at 240 volts so even if you installed this let's say on a 20 amp breaker which if you have you don't have a lot of available amperage in your panel and an electrician's like you can't do a 50 or 60 amp breaker in there to be able to charge your car you you could, you could then say, well, let's do a lower amperage, a 20 or 30 amp breaker at 220 volts. Now, this is how fast this charges. So if you see that this amount here is how fast or how many amps it'll pull on this size of breaker. So it's 20% of this amount. So on a 20 amp breaker, you can only charge at 16 amps maximum, which is 3.8 kilowatts. However, for the Model 3 and Y, that's a 15 mile per hour charge rate on the car. So 15, 15 miles in an hour, over the course of 10 hours overnight, that's 150 miles. That's probably sufficient for a lot of people. They may not be driving more than that. If you do a 30 amp breaker, so that'll draw 24 amps, which is 5.7 kilowatts, that'll charge a Model 3 or Y at 22 miles of charge per hour. So 22 miles an hour charge rate over 10 hours, that's 220 miles. And so that's probably gonna be sufficient for most people's driving. So you may not even need to install this at a higher amperage. The lower, am the lower amperage breaker that you use, the, the smaller the wire, the cheaper the wire you can use. All right, I did just kind of a quick mock-up of how the wiring works on these. So uh, we have this wire here, this yellow wire. This is a 12 gauge wire that can be used on a 20, 20 amp breaker. And normally when it's wired for like a regular outlet, it can be done at 120 volts. Uh, the, the black is power, white is neutral, and then this is ground. But when we're doing it in, in 240 volt configuration, we can do this where we have the, the black and the white are the power, and then the, the copper is still the ground. Pretend this is a 20 amp breaker. This is a 30, but I don't have an extra uh, 20 amp breaker laying around. This is a double pole. 20, a 30 amp breaker, but we're going to just say it's a 20, 20 amp breaker. You can install this in your breaker. Just put the, the white and the black into either slot here, and then you put the, the copper just into the grounding bar inside of your panel. And really the hardest part of the installation of 
really a lot of electrical proje projects is just running the wire. Now this is Romex wire. This can't be put in conduit. See, I have a wall connector where I have a, a conduit running from one to the other ones. Uh, when you do that, when you're running conduit, you have to use a non-NMB wire. So you're using the wire like this. This is a THHN wire that I've used in that. That's a six gauge THHN, which that's rated for conduit use. But what I did is, is to this one here, this one's the universal wall connector. The universal wall connector can, da can be daisy chained uh, to another wall connector. So these two wall connectors kind of share the same 40, or it's a 50 amp breaker. They basically share, share 40 amps. So if you're just running the wire in the wall, like for example, the wire running to this one is in the wall in my attic the whole way, so I was able to use a Romex wire. So this you could do if you're running it just inside of your wall cavity, up in your attic, things like that. But if you're running it in conduit, you want to use a different kind of wire. You just get a red and a black and then a ground, three wires, and be able to run it from the three wires from here and then into your breaker, into your panel. So this just shows really how simple the wiring is for this. Um, especially if you don't have a lot of capacity in your breaker box, you could easily you could easily have this wired with, on just a 20 amp breaker, and you're going to be charging at about 15 miles in an hour, which probably might be sufficient for you. So you can do that. And this wire, this Romex wire, a 12 gauge wire, is a lot cheaper than doing like a six gauge. So this is a way to maybe save a little money and accommodate a panel that might that doesn't have a lot of amperage space in it. If your panel can accommodate a 40, 50, or 60 amp breaker and, and the appropriate wiring size, you'd probably use like an 8 gauge, 6 gauge, and then you could probably use 6 gauge for both of these, uh, maybe even 4 gauge for the, uh, the 60 amp. But if you can accommodate that, I would say go, go as big as that you're, you're able to accommodate that way that you can charge your, your car quickly. Because even on a 50 amp breaker, which I, I have an, on all mine, it charges at 40 amps, and it will charge at 37 miles in an hour, which that's pretty high. I don't really need that kind of capacity, but it is nice to know if I have to like, if I need to charge for two hours, I can get over 70 miles in, in, in just a couple hours of charging, which is which can be nice. One thing that's also cool with these wall connectors, they can be uh, installed outside. So in, in uh, you know inclement weather situations, they can be installed out there. You can set up, they have a Wi-Fi signal. You can go into the settings and you can configure which cars can charge on it. If your connector is outside, you don't want other cars charging on it. it you can just set for your VINs only on your car and then no one else will be able to charge on your wall connector. So it's a way to kind of protect that. Okay, so the wall connectors are super versatile. I really like the, like the flexibility in the installation. Tesla really made that easy. Uh, they really have like some security settings with them. Being that you can uh, use them outside is really cool as well. If you need to have more than one installed, uh, take a look at my video. I'll link that, but I'll show you how I installed my universal wall connector and then daisy chained another wall connector to it because I didn't want to have to run like two separate lines back to my breaker box. My breaker, my breaker panel is getting kind of full with breakers. And so there's a way for, for two cars to charge and they're sharing a, a 50 amp breaker and they basically split the charge and they're basically each getting like 20 amps when they're charging and then one, when one's done they one gets full 40 amps so it's a way to like kind of minimize the lines the the, the wire runs back to your breaker box because so this was a really long run so there's some versatility if you ha need to do more than one you can upgrade to the universal wall connector and then you can daisy chain other connectors off of that as well so guys, I'll leave a link to that video where I installed this system here, if you're curious, as well as my, my, my few other uh, wall connectors. Pretty simple to do, uh, but also, it, even if you're not doing it yourself, it might just be helpful to know like what's involved in it, so that way when you're getting a quote, you can kind of see what's involved. And if you get a really high quote, it might be because you have a really long run. If, if, someone, if they have to run, you know, wire 70, 80 feet to your breaker box, you know, on the clear, clear other side of your garage, it's going to be more expensive than if it's just a... Uh, you know, 10 or 15 feet, because the wire is, can sometimes be the most expensive part of the installation. The wire and then running the wire, if it's through attics and walls and things like that, that can be a lot more complicated, a lot more work. So if you're new to Tesla and you're looking at doing charging, get the wall connector. You're not going to regret it. It's kind of the best route to go. I also recommend getting the mobile connector. The mobile connector just has a little case. It's for plugging into outlets. I keep that in my car, and if I have to plug in somewhere, if I'm away 
from my home, I'm going on a road trip, I'll take that with me. So if I'm at someone's house, I can maybe plug in there. If I get stranded, maybe I can plug into a, a random outlet somewhere, but I don't use that for routine charging. The wall connector is the way to go for like your day-to-day -day charging. All right, guys, we'll leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully this was helpful for you. So hit that thumbs up, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Thank you.